There's people out there saying you can't make coffee on solar. I disagree. It doesn't take a lot of battery. It doesn't take a lot of inverting. And it doesn't take a lot of sun to charge it back up. Unless you're always sitting in front of your solar panel blocking it like I am. So I just wanted to show you making a pot of coffee on solar with a system that costs less than 700 bucks. Here we go. Just so you guys don't think I'm crazy, here we go. 10 cups. We're going for a pot. Oh look, nine cups made it in. So first off, yes, it's pulling 860 watts off this inverter. If you buy a cheapo inverter, you're not gonna be able to pull 860 watts off of a one kilowatt inverter. This is a one kilowatt inverter. See that, one kilowatt inverter. And it can actually do one kilowatt. So you gotta make sure you buy the right inverter. It's about 230 bucks. Put a link down below. You can buy an inverter that'll do a pot of coffee. This is just a coffee maker that I had laying around. It's rated for 900 watts. You can see that it's using about 850. Now, you need a battery to be able to store your energy to run your coffee. Because obviously if we're running 860 watts, this little 230 watt panel, panel ain't gonna supply that all at once. It's gonna supply that over time. So this panel is gonna charge up the battery. Battery will run the inverter to, charge, to, to get your coffee going. This battery here is an ammo case, as you can see, with some terminals on the side and a bunch of used lithium ion batteries inside. They were already configured as a 12 volt battery. Well, really like a 14 volt battery. They're a 4S lithium ion from batteryhookup.com. If you go that route, use discount code BEAN. I'll show it down below and you can see get a 5% off. It gives me a little kickback too as, as an affiliate. So this was like 160 bucks worth of batteries and I've done a capacity test on this. So real world, they're used batteries. I got 1.3 kilowatt hours off of this battery. And we're sitting here running coffee at 860 watts. You could run 860 watts for what, an hour and a half on 1.3 kilowatt hours. That's, that's a long time. That, that's a lot of coffee to be running consistently for that long. Now, something that you need to watch out for, running the actual pot of coffee is not gonna be a big deal. Don't leave the coffee maker on. That warming pad down there, that thing will drain your battery because it's the overtime stuff that really drains your battery. It's that thing that runs at 100 watts 24 hours a day and draws 2.4 kilowatt hours over the day. That's what's gonna drain your battery. Not running a pot of coffee at 860 watts for three minutes. That's not what's gonna drain your battery. All right, so the last piece I didn't talk about, we, we said the solar panel, right? You gotta have a charge controller. This is our charge controller and you can see that we're currently pushing 213 watts from the sun into our battery. Now, this is an MPPT charge controller, and that means that it can take the higher voltage panel. You can see this panel's up at 27 volts, and it'll charge your battery, which is down at about 15 volts. And it does that through a DC to DC converter. So you can see we're at about 15 volts and 14 amps, which is gonna be close to our 200 watts or so that we're pushing into the battery. And that is gonna be fairly consistent. So, you know, you might get in the summer a good four to six hours of that kind of charge rate into your battery. So if you're pushing 200 watts from your solar into your batteries for six hours, that would be 200 times six is about 1.2 kilowatt hours into your batteries. There's some conversion efficiencies there, that, so you'll lose a little bit of that. But that's enough to recharge that battery after that pot of coffee, ain't it? Our inverter's working, fan's, fan's blowing, it's doing what it's supposed to do, it's, it's getting warm, because it's running pretty close to its capacity, and that's okay. While we're sitting here waiting on our coffee to brew, let me tell you about this inverter. One of the reasons that I picked this inverter is because of the high voltage cutout. On this inverter, it's, it's at 16 volts. So most inverters are in the, in the 15 to 15 and a half volt range. And if the battery ever gets charged above that level, then you're gonna have an alarm on the inverter and it's gonna shut down. 
They also have a low voltage cutout, which are usually around 10 volts, and that's not going to be an issue. The reason that comes into play is that a lot of times you can get very inexpensive uh, lithium ion batteries that have a nominal voltage around 14.8 volts, 14.6 volts. The problem with that typically is you can usually use those in a 12 volt system, so like a 12 volt inverter, because by the time you charge those batteries, they're up at 16.8 volts. That would be their high voltage, which would be 4.2 volts per cell. You have four in series, and you end up with 16.8. With this inverter, I can charge those cells up to four volts a piece, and that's a reasonable level to where you're not losing a whole lot of capacity because that last 0.2 volts doesn't have a lot of capacity in these lithium ion cells, but it's high enough to get most of that capacity. So you might be at 80 or 90% capacity for these batteries. And where that comes into play is that you can get used lithium ion batteries that are already in a 4S configuration, already have a BMS installed on them, and just have a positive and negative at a 14 point something volt nominal. That makes it super simple because you're not having to go spec a BMS and have the, the heavy gauge wires coming off this BMS to be able to run your battery. And then like spot welding lithium ion cells and stuff like that. No, you, you just worry about the normal stuff. You've got pigtails coming off, you twist wires together, solder them up, do some heat shrink and you're good. And that's what I did with this in this ammo case here. Now there are some disadvantages. So with a lithium iron phosphate lithium cell, they have a slightly lower nominal voltage. So with a 4S configuration of lithium iron phosphate, it works really well for a 12 volt battery because the high voltage is, is similar to like a lead acid, which means all of your inverters are gonna work perfectly with it. They're more expensive. You can't typically get them used or already in a 4S configuration, that type of a thing. You can, but they're, they're a little more expensive. And if you can get one of those, that's great. If you can get a 4S lithium iron phosphate, that's better. These are lithium ions. So, you know, the whole controversies with batteries blowing up, this is the type that does that. So certainly something to consider. But with our higher voltage cutout of this inverter, we're able to set our charge controller to 16 volts. It'll charge the batteries up to 16 volts and the inverter can handle up to 16 volts and so it doesn't hit that cutout. We've now finished our pot of coffee and what we want to do now is see how much energy did it actually take. So first of all was can we run the pot of can we run the coffee maker? Yes, we can run the coffee maker. 1000 watt inverter will run our 860 watt load for our coffee maker. That's fine. And it ran the whole time the whole pot of coffee and what we have here <coughs> is how many kilowatt hours it used. We're at 113 watt hours for a 10 cup pot of coffee. 110 watt hours. So there's some conversion efficiencies from DC to AC. So if we consider that it's about 85% efficient, then really that's 127 watt hours out of the actual battery. But how many 10 cup pots of coffee can you make on a 1.3 kilowatt hour battery at 127 watt hours a piece? Um, I'm, I'm saying 10. Is it 10? 10 of them? Yeah? I think that's right. So, that's pretty cool, right? That means that you could either make a lot of coffee, it should be fine, if that's your thing, or you could also run your lights in your van, or your RV, or your cabin. I, I just, I don't get it. Why do people say you can't make coffee? There you go. Pot of coffee. Ready to go.